And joining us here in the studio, CBS News legal analyst Jack Ford. Jack, good to have you with us this morning. Uh, so, so next step here would be mm. extradition. Right. What exactly happens in that process, and can the suspect fight it? Yeah, you can. More often than not, people will say, okay, we won't fight extradition. I'll go ahead. I'll go quietly, if you will. But there are instances when somebody might say, no, I, I'm not agreeing to any of this. If they want me, they're going to have to come and get me. And it kicks into this extradition process. A lot of people don't understand what it is. It's not a trial. In other words, a judge here is not going to go through a full-blown take testimony, render a decision guilty or not guilty. The, the only finding has to be that a judge is convinced that, yes, it appears that a crime took place there, and yes, it appears that this person is the one they're looking for, essentially. Yeah, so it, it, it's not a full-blown trial, but it's enough for a judge to say, we have an agreement with you, mm -hmm. uh, with this country. You're looking for this guy for this offense. I'm satisfied that there's probable cause that all of that happened Fine, you take them. So probable cause. But one thing that has, it hasn't come up all that much in this case before sort of things on the sidelines is, is motive. So yeah. there doesn't have to be any, any even idea of a motive here. Right. And what's fascinating about motive is this. A lot of people think, well, if you don't have a motive, you can't prove a crime. Curiously, motive is not an element of a crime. A prosecutor, I was a prosecutor for a lot of years, a prosecutor doesn't have to prove motive. Now you like to be able to prove motive because jurors or judges instinctively want to know the answer to that question, well, why? Why would somebody do it? But you don't have to. So here there's been this question about was this an extortion or not? Was there money demand? Did, there ever, did anybody actually do anything about that? A judge for an extradition proceeding basically doesn't care. Mm -hmm. As long as a judge in this case would be satisfied, yes there was a breaking, it was a burglary, a break in here, and yes there was an assault when you put something around somebody's neck and you tell them that's a bomb collar, that's whether a judge has any inkling of mm -hmm. a motive or not really would be insignificant here. Okay, and I just, you know, so many people think about it, can't imagine what went through that poor uh, girl's mind, 18 years old, to have to deal with that. You touched on the cooperation for extradition, which we hear a lot about. Yeah. How much cooperation traditionally, though, is there between law enforcement, in this case, between Australia and here in the U.S.? Well, I think here what you're seeing is this is such a high-profile case, you've got an extraordinary amount of cooperation. The Australian authorities we've seen recently went out of their way to praise the FBI for all the work that they've done. A lot of times it depends upon the nature of the crime that they're talking about that's being investigated. Obviously, bigger crime is going to get more cooperation. That's the natural course of things. Here, apparently, there was extraordinary cooperation between both agencies. Jack, nice to see you this morning. Right, Thanks.